Klaus Barbie, the Butcher of Lyon. Born on the 25th of October 1913 in Godesberg, Germany, Nicholas Klaus Barbie would join the SS in September 1935. Barbie here would work for the SD, the SS Security Service, before joining the Nazi Party in May of 1937. Assigned to a department headed by the infamous Adolf Eichmann, after the German invasion of the Netherlands, Barbie would work to gather all the Jews he could and send them away. In November 1942, Barbie would be sent to Lyon, France, where he would lead the local Geheime Staatspolizei, or Gestapo. The Gestapo was the secret state police of Nazi Germany and its conquered territories. The group was feared by many. Barbie would set up his headquarters at a hotel in Lyon and it would be here where he would personally torture many adults and even children. Barbie would also have a local French resistance leader killed after he was beaten and dunked in ammonia. Perhaps the most disturbing of Barbie's atrocities would be when he discovered several dozen Jewish children and teachers hidden in a boarding house and sent them to the Auschwitz concentration camp. Only one teacher would live. Getting into the later half of 1944, the Allies were pushing further and further into France following D-Day. As the Germans were getting ready to leave Lyon, Barbie was still adamant on exterminating as many undesirable people as possible. In August 1944, Barbie would send one last train that took hundreds to their death. After all of these despicable actions, Barbie would earn the nickname the Butcher of Lyon. Now at the end of the war, Barbie was back in Germany and after burning off his SS blood group tattoo that would have identified him as a member of the criminal organization, he worked against communism. This is where the story gets interesting. In 1947, in June, Barbie would give himself up to the United States' CIC, or Counterintelligence Corps. The U.S. would give Barbie money and protection in exchange for his work. Barbie would work for the U.S. and Germany until 1949, where, with the help of the Americans, would relocate to Bolivia and South America under the name of Klaus Altman, and would still work as a United States agent. Barbie would live a life without consequence in Bolivia for over 30 years, working in several governmental and police organizations. All the while in France, Barbie had already been sentenced to death for his heinous war crimes there. However, he was never extradited to France, even after he was located by Nazi hunters in 1972, because Barbie had been aiding the leader of Bolivia, Hugo Bonzer Suarez, who refused to let him go. However, in the early 1980s, as others rose to power in Bolivia, it was agreed that Barbie would be finally extradited to France. Barbie arrived in France on the 7th of February, 1983. It should be noted that the U.S. would eventually apologize to France for its handling of Barbie. Eventually, Barbie went on trial in France on the 11th of May, 1987. Despite being tried in the 1950s in France in absentia, the results had simply expired, therefore Barbie had to be tried again. Strangely, the three lawyers defending Barbie, who were Asian, African, and Arab, said that the French and the Jews were just as guilty of crimes as the Nazis were. Despite this abnormal claim, Barbie was found guilty of crimes against humanity on the 4th of July, 1987 and was to spend the rest of his life in prison, the highest punishment available in France after the death penalty was abolished six years prior. Klaus Barbie, who was responsible for the deaths of thousands, would die from cancer in prison in 1991 at the age of 77 in Lyon, France, the same city he viciously ravaged nearly half a century ago. Thanks for watching.